Let's go back to the place I left, where I compared the Berlin Olympia Stadium with our crater. What was happening there? Well, I think the opening ceremony was an occult ritual with Hitler as high priest. Well, we know that our crater is associated with the pentagram. The stadium is the pentagram. The opening ceremony is the ritual. So you have the pentagram and the fire. Now you are ready for some human sacrifice. Like a soldier is sacrificed on the battlefield. So these occult Olympic ceremonies are used to show you how they will torture you the coming years. So the openings ritual of Berlin was probably the invocation of World War II. So it would be nice of course to know how are they doing it. Let's zoom in on the Berlin Amphitheater. In the word amphitheater you can almost hear the word amplifier. But first you have to create the energy. You have the Ka and the Ba. The red pyramid the winners and the blue pyramid the losers. This creates a tensity, a voltage. From utter despair to complete euphoria. Oh my god! Our team just scored the goal! Another place to harvest energy would be prisons. Let's take a look at this one in Belgium, Brussels. You see the pentagram. And below you see this strange building. Is this the harvester of the energy? The amplifier? Another one in Belgium in Ghent, the pentagram. Before we go any further, let me recapitulate. Walt Disney was building Disneyland. Disneyland was a perfect copy of our crater. But Walt Disney also had plans for making Disney World. The map of the Disney World was a perfect copy of a part of the bigger Earth. This map had four components. Epcot, industrial park area, the entrance complex and the airport of the future. Later I stated the possibility that maybe these components were referring to body parts. As I'm diving deeper and deeper into this Disney World map theory I come to the conclusion that they are constantly repeating this same pattern. This exact pattern. Why is this? Let's take a look at another famous pentagram. That brings us to Arlington National Cemetery, another amphitheater, perfect place to harvest some human misery. Another famous pentagram, Castel Sant'Angelo in Rome, 
But here I have the impression they are rebuilding the whole map. You have Crater Earth, Epcot, Industrial Park area, Entrance Complex, this is a strange one, Airport of the Future, but I think it has something to do with an old Roman wall. That is all fake history of course, the Romans never lived there. For people who still doubt we're living in a crater. Let's go to Mecca, perfect copy of our crater. Look at the shape in the center. But in this case it's almost like they are trying to recreate the shape. It's almost like I'm seeing feet and the tail and the head. Let's take a closer look. And it's not just the buildings. It is as if this pattern is being modeled with the clay of the earth. So at this point I'm asking myself could a life form manifest itself into our landscape? And what life form would this be? Enters synchronicity. Someone sent me a link about a video. It was called Evidence that Yahweh was a dragon. So I started watching it and at minute two I saw this picture which I knew already, but at that particular moment a giant piece of the puzzle fell at its place. Let's take the Disney World map. Well you know that the upper part is our crater. Now take the picture of Quetzalcoatl. So the human being that is being eaten is our crater, the pentagram the victim. So Quetzalcoatl is the system without Crater Earth. So Epcot is the head, the industrial park area is the intestines, the entrance complex is the reproductive system and the airports of the future are the feet. So this creature is Quetzalcoatl. Take a look at the head of Quetzalcoatl, Epcot. And what about the reproductive system? Do you know this one? Someone is sitting in the reproductive system of Q, the famous man with the bag. Take a look at the phoenix of the openings ritual of the London Olympics 2012. Look at the feet. Quetzalcoatl is the alien queen. Take the first three letters Q, U, E. Probably the origin of the word queen. And Q has many forms the lion, the Ari, the griffin, the Anzu, the phoenix. Let's go back to the story of the parasite. The spider has no way of knowing that an egg is lying on its back. Let's presume we are living on a little blue ball flying in space. Where would this parasite be? But if we would be living in a crater on a giant earth, well, the parasite might be lying next door. 
eating you alive. So what would this creature be? Would it be a thousand year old dragon? I think not. I think when native people see an airplane, they call it the Iron Bird. So when the native people saw this creature, they called it the Feathered Serpent. A feathered serpent, what would it be? Well, remember this image from the Dendera temple? I thought it was our crater. I was wrong. And that's a lot of feathers, if you ask me. That brings us, of course, to the Ark of Noah. Or should we call it the Solar Bark? And we're not talking about a little boat here. Is it a boat? Something is definitely there. It appears to be a rock, but it is not. Reminds me of the movie Prometheus, where a giant rock appears to be a spaceship. And maybe your spaceship needs a pilot. Well, in the movie, the pilot is still alive. If we are talking about a spaceship, then we are not talking about body parts, but machine parts. And then the entrance complex is not the reproductive system, but the pilot chamber. Take a look at the left arm. Well, it happens I have an air view of the pilot chamber. Or when reality is stranger than fiction. Let's talk about giants. The Olmecs were constantly carving out the same head. Is this the pilot? Let's go back to the Ark of Noah or the Solar Bark. There you see Set is spearing the snake Apep. And now you are tapping into the energy system of the snake. Is this the reason they are interested in Mars? Tapping into the snake. Remember this one? Let's compare the worms of Dune with the spaceship of Prometheus and the pilots.
my conclusion would be that the supposed Ark of Noah is still lying next to our crater. It is of enormous proportions and it is probably a synthetic life form. Well, I was looking for her, the alien queen. Almost looks like an anchor. The Ankh. The alien queen was a seed bank, holder of alien DNA. Dumping its DNA in our crater and using us as the incubator. Interesting for our story. Amongst the alien life forms, would there have been some humanoid species amongst them? One of the other conclusions of this video was that Yahweh needed gold and virgins. Why on earth would you need virgins? What if your alien humanoid species cannot live in this hostile environment? Maybe you could use a local monkey mother as incubator. And why a virgin? Maybe the alien child dies in an unsealed womb. So how would we recognize them? Well, if they all had a moustache, it would be simple. We can of course look at their symbology. Their viking boat is probably a perfect copy of the Ark. I already made a video about their symbology, but I would replace the first sentence with Land of the Solomon Monsters. And it's not just Germany, of course. The Incas believed that Cortes was the return of Quetzalcoatl. Was it the boat? Or was it something else? If Mama is lying next to our crater, could it have some offspring? 